everybody, Bob Babbitt here with Mr. Mark Allen, The Grip. 31 years ago, does it seem like 31, 1992, you're racing the Nice Triathlon. Eve Cordier has a huge lead, huge entourage. How far back were you? And you, you didn't catch him to what, the last quarter mile? Yeah, that was, uh, I think it was my ninth Nice race. And I had won eight previous. Yeah. So, you know, I was kind of not in the mood to lose. But <laughs> Eve had another plan. And he was about seven and a half minutes ahead, I think it was, off of the bike, which... You know, it's a decent gap. The run was 20 miles. Yes. 10, 10 miles one direction and then 10 miles back the other direction. And at the turnaround, I had only made up two and a half minutes. And so, of course, my math brain is saying, you're not going to win this thing if you keep running like this. And so I thought, I have to stop running like a steady triathlete and I need to run like a runner. And so I would surge as hard as I could until I couldn't hold it anymore and I'd back off. And I'd surge back off, surge back off. And I didn't know if I was... I, I knew I was probably gaining time, but I didn't know if it was going to be enough. And finally, when we got back to the very beginning edge of the Promenade des Anglais, I could see this massive entourage in front of me. <laughs> and I knew that, ne that Eve was up there somewhere. He's, this is his home turf. Yeah, Le Fils de Nice, you know, yeah. the, the son of Nice. And, um, you know, that finally I, I got to the very back of hundreds of like mopeds and motorcycles and bicycles and you know they were popping the champagne corks already and literally the they didn't know i was coming in this one guy turns around and i thought he saw me and i thought he was gonna have a heart attack yeah because he's like oh you know <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway I, I kept moving up through the crowd moving up moving up moving up but i you know i could s see the finish line i mean you can see it for quite a ways and i'm like i'm gonna run out of turf there's no way i can catch him but i kept trying trying and finally i could see his back and i'm like oh shit i might be able to do this and you know but he's still up there and i'm ki i'm closing i'm closing and literally at the point where the sign said 400 meters to the finish I came right up behind him and there was this moment of hesitation because, you know, Eve was somebody that I truly have respected, you know, since the beginning and I knew that it would mean so much for him and his career and everything if he could win. It would be this amazing celebration here in Nice. And I thought, this is sport. You, If you can win it, you have to do it. Competition. Yeah, and so I, I passed him and went on and I won it. And I knew there w it would be a really emotional, you know, thing for him. And he came across, you know, and the, the tears were coming down. And it was, you know, it was like a little bitter, bittersweet. bittersweet. Yeah. A bittersweet victory. Um, but I knew I had to do it, you know. And so, uh, but it was the closest, the, the hardest I was ever pushed here in Nice. And, um, you know, I've had some close battles like with right. Dave in 1989. And, and this was right up there with that that as far as the intensity of it and, and it's it's a race that um obviously here in europe they know about it in the u.s probably not a lot not of people much. know and yeah. until you have raced here and you understand how demanding the bike is and then that you've still got to run really really fast you don't truly know you, you, it's hard to appreciate what it takes to to win here and so anyway, I'm excited that it's going to be the place for the World Championships for the men this year, the women next year, like that. Um, and uh, for those who haven't raced here before, you know, it, it's a real treat. And so uh, I'm looking forward to that. One of the things that uh, I remember talking about a different Nice race, and you woke up sick on race morning. And what you said in the interview, which I, I draw on a lot, was... Okay, I'm not 100%. Oh, you're, I'm sure you're going, I'm not going to race. I can't race. But then you came up with the concept of, I'm not 100%, maybe I'm 60%, but I'm going to get 100% out of the 60% I have, and I'll be happy with the effort. Yeah, you know, there's so many lessons about life you can learn that you can translate into other areas in the future. There, there was one year I woke up, and I was, I was sick. I was achy. I had a little bit of a fever. And I thought, I cannot race. There's no way. And I thought, well, you know, I flew all the way here from, you know, the United States. I should at least start. And so I started. I made it through the swim. I got out of the water. I still felt pretty lousy. And I thought, well, let me just get on the bike. If I don't feel better, I can just dr st stop. 
and so you know got on the bike made it through the bike get to the transition area i'm like i don't feel good but well let me just start the <laughs> start the run you know and I, I just went like that yeah and then i'm running and at one point all of a sudden i moved into second place scott tinley was the one who was leading at that point and i thought here I am in second place, and there's one guy ahead of me, and this was a, a day where I wasn't even going to start the race. Right. And so I ended up, you know, working my way up, passing him, going on for the win, and it was just this, this precious les lesson of saying, you know, sometimes you just need to start something, even if you feel like you can't do it, and see how it evolves. And, um, you know, obviously I'm so glad that I did. And, again, it was just there's so many – rich lessons like that, that that come out of racing and competition that you just are so unexpected but so valuable i think that's what connects the pros and the age groupers because those life those lessons that you gain during a race translate to everything you do there's sometimes a work project like how do i get started okay yeah. one little part of it i'll just do i'll work for five minutes and next thing you know you get through it yeah, and I think a lot of people look at the pros and go, oh, you guys have it so dialed in and it's, it's you know, automatic. And, you know, Mark, you were, look like you were, you paced it perfectly and you caught Tinley. And <laughs> yeah. they just they have don't, no idea. They don't know the struggles that are just, you know, I have the same common struggles that everybody else has. Uh, maybe I'm going at a different speed, but the, the struggle is the same. I remember talking to Jan Ferdano one year and it looked like he'd been sitting in the Barca Lounger throughout the day winning Ironman World Championship. And I said, Did it, was it as easy as it looked? He said, I was going to drop out 18 times. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, you, you don't see what's going on in your yeah, head and yeah. in your heart where you, know, you, you have to overcome. Yeah. And that's sort of what you all have in common in this sport. Yeah. No, that's, what, that's what makes sport so great, so exciting and, and unpredictable. And I think that's where I always sort of like to live life is just on, just on that edge where you're you're moving into that place where hmm i think i can but i'm not sure you know and that's exactly. where that's where life is really worth living I, I remember one of our challenge athletes was speaking to a group and she drew a circle on the wall and she goes this is your comfort zone and then she made a dot outside it she goes this is where the magic happens yeah i love that <laughs> and that's where the magic happened for you in 1992 yeah at nice you got out of the comfort zone you had to change you had to change your game to win one of the greatest races in the history of sport. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, Eve and I are, are still very close friends, and of course he's the reason that um, triathlon has continued in Nice as yes. the race director for Ironman France here and a lot of other races around France, and then, of course, the World Championships that will be back here in uh, later this, this year. Amazing. What was uh, the conversation, or was there one, at that finish line? Because you've, you've just won this race. You're totally pumped up. But you know what it meant to Eve not to win it. And I'm sure there's a point where you're thinking, maybe we just finished together because this is his hometown. <laughs> I th that was another thought. Like, well, maybe we hold hands, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, no. I, I, it's racing. This is cut and dry. It has yeah, to be yeah, racing. Right. And you know he crossed the finish line and and there were there were no words that could be said it was just a a hug you Mutual know respect a hug and that was that was all the words that needed to be said love it grip as always it's nice to have two hometowns you got kona and you've got these and you got, and both of them are going to be at ironman world championships this year it's pretty fun i know this is this is where uh ha half of my career was made yes, and so no for question. me it's i you know i do have two triathlon homes nice france and kona hawaii Love it. Mark Allen is with us here in beautiful Nice. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out. See you next time.